The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? Then he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death, and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that They had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Just as those disciples on the road to Emmaus recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, hopefully we just as poignantly recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread that we celebrate here each day. Uh, I always like to call this the first post-resurrection Mass. We have the Last Supper, which is technically the first time that Jesus would have given us his body and blood, but this would be the second time chronologically, the first time after the resurrection. And um, the Liturgy of the Word that Jesus spoke on the road, uh, the New Testament is contained in the Old, the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New, fulfilling uh, St. Augustine's saying about scripture, and that we uh, come to recognize Jesus more and more in the 
unfolding of God's uh, salvific plan, not only in the life of the world, but even in our own individual lives, that we come to know the risen Lord more and more each and every day, and that our knowledge uh, is strengthened by our coming to this Eucharist, but not only our knowledge, but the Acts of the Apostles reminds us the very power that can flow through us. Just think of how long it might have taken and what a risk that uh, Peter and, and uh, John took in um, telling this man, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Um, they trusted that the Lord could work in and through them. And it's that kind of trust, I think, that the Eucharist wants us to uh, engender within us, that the Eucharist should engender within us, that somehow, just as powerfully as Jesus' healing ministry continued in the apostles, so it can continue in us, maybe not in quite such a drastic, miraculous way, but uh, every act of healing, uh, no matter how natural or supernatural, is always a grace of God. And may we continue to be that healing presence in the Lord, uh, for the Lord and in the Lord, strengthened by what we receive here. So many saints who have gone before us have been nourished at this table, so we are privileged as well. May God strengthen us and help us more and more to recognize the presence of Jesus in the breaking of the bread.